Council today was divided into two segments. The first segment was the swearing in of eight new permanent secretaries. Eight new permanent secretaries have been sworn in today by Mr. President before the commencement of Council. And the President has congratulated them and charge them with the responsibility of ensuring that the ideas for which the civil service in this country is known for is upheld to the letter. Second, also before the commencement of the Federal Executive Council proper, the members of the Federal Executive Council congratulated Mr. President on his re-election as chairman of the Economic Committee of West Africa, ECOWAS. Recall that the president, immediately after he was sworn in, was made the chairman of ECOWAS by member states. Over the weekend, at the last ECOWAS meeting, members of ECOWAS, heads of state and government of ECOWAS, also found it necessary to re elect our president as chairman for another term. This indeed is a testament to the kind of respect that they have, not just for our president, but for Nigeria as a country. Therefore, members of the Federal Executive Council congratulated Mr. President and have also given him the assurance of all members to continue to support him in the discharge of not just his renewed hope agenda vision, but also the larger assignment that he has to carry on with the task of uniting and promoting the interest of this uh, sub-region. Um, as usual, there were also approvals given to various ministries for the project that they submitted to the Federal Council uh, for approval. But of significant note is that there is a decision of the Federal Executive Council to step down some memos, especially those from the Ministry of Works, until the next Federal Executive Council meeting. Now, that idea is to re-examine, especially those parts that require augmentation or review. Uh, the Minister of Works has been directed to work with the Honorable Minister of Budget and Economic Planning and the Minister of Finance to look at those projects again and bring them in line strictly with budgetary provisions where there is the necessity of additional funding, this will be brought back to the Federal Executive Council meeting next time for further deliberation. So today we don't have so many projects that were approved as a result of that. But of note is to say that Mr. President, in line with his thinking of ensuring that there is uh, probity proficiency, and diligence in project execution has directed that all projects that require additional funding, especially major projects of the Ministry of Works, be looked at once again so that there will be further deliberation on that at the next council meeting. Um, there is also a discussion around the National Council on Procurement. The Federal Executive Council is looking at that again. Recall that in the last 17 years, the National Council on Procurement has not really uh, been very uh, effective. So, Mr. President has submitted to the National Assembly uh, a bill 
which in fact has scaled through the first reading at the House of Representatives. The whole idea is to ensure that we have a robust National Council of Procurement that will continue to look at all aspects of procurement in line with the vision and to bring every project into the physical uh, discipline, financial discipline that Mr. President is always uh, talking about. Um, I have with me, uh, of course, the Honorable Minister of Budget and Economy Planning, who is going to dwell more on that to give you detail of what the thinking of council is as regards the National Council on procurement and also the review or the re-examination of some of the projects of the Federal Ministry of Works. There was also a discussion on uh, the report by the Delhi Trust newspaper, a report that we have commented about in the past, and the position of government on that report. The federal government insists that that report on the LGTB, or the so-called Samoa Agreement, was misleading, it was false, and it was designed to create confusion in the land. My ministry has also briefed the Federal Executive Council on all the steps we have taken, including writing to the industry's own ombudsman with a view to drawing the attention of media trust newspapers about that very misleading uh, report. We expect that the industry's ombudsman will look at that dispassionately and the Fire Executive Council will be patient to await the report of the ombudsman. But suffice is to say that the Fire government views that report or that um, story by the Daily Trust newspaper very seriously and is urging members of the Nigerian press to please report responsibly in the interest of our country. But the Federal Executive Council also reiterated its commitment to media freedom and the freedom of expression in this country. Like we have said over time, there is no intention whatsoever for the administration of President Bola Ahmed Chinubu to gag the press or to be seen in any way walking in the way of media freedom or press freedom in this country. More than ever before, government is committed to ensuring that the media will continue to operate in an environment that is very friendly and supportive of their work as a strong pillar for the continuous enthronement of democracy in our land. But like we have said over and over, we call on the Nigerian media to please show restraint in the kind of reporting that they also provide to Nigerians so that fake news, misinformation, or disinformation will have no place in our society. I laid out at the beginning is that all the projects that were asked to step down are not actually new projects. These are inherited projects. Some of them have been there for as far back as 12, uh, 13 years. So, uh, I mean, because of inadequate budgetary provision, they have not been completed. And so they kept being carried over year after year. And because it is a desire of the present administration not to abandon projects, because these projects are actually for Nigerians. So they are being streamlined, uh, they are being worked out with a way, with a view to ensuring that all of them get completed uh, you know, a, a piecemeal, 
instrument. Uh, highway is not it's not an inherited project, and therefore uh, it is not suffering from this uh, or having this issue of budget uh, augmentation. That uh, most of these projects that require either variation or augmentation are projects that were carried over from you know the previous administration, not just the last administration, previous administration, and because you know what is happening, inflation is coming in, other factors are coming in. So it is normal that you continue to review uh, this project. So then, is to ensure that all the 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 project are continuous projects, meaning that they are coming from previous administration. And that is why they have this issue of either review or augmentation. All new projects that were awarded now don't have that problem of uh, augmentation for now. So the Lagos Calabar is a new project and the pro a funding provision has already been made for that. So it's not going to have this issue of augmentation or review as we understand it now. Um, however, all the projects that we said will be stepped down does not mean that they are going to be thrown away. What council decision is, is that we'll bring them all, look at them again. Now the Minister of Budget, Minister of Finance, the Minister of Works will sit down and look at the projects again and reprioritize and source for funding for this project so that government to look at those ones that can actually be completed so that we don't suffer this uh, recurrence of abandoned projects or projects lingering beyond budgetary uh, circles. I think this is the, 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 the principle of it. It's not as if uh, council has decided that projects that are brought were just stepped down because of, and, and it's not just because of money. There are also other variables that, that will be involved, you know, uh, trying to find out which ones uh, will government take now, which ones will go in the next phase and in, in that order. So it's not an abandonment and augmentation and review uh, are not for new projects. Yes, because like we said, uh, Mr. President does not believe that projects that are meant for Nigerians that were initiated by previous administrations will be left uh, abandoned. Um, and there is a question uh, asked, I think, by the nation of about uh, are we going to court with, uh, uh, with trust. Let me, let me say that the principle here is that the press is actually a partner in any democratic journey. And this administration, particularly the presidency of President Bola Ahmed Chinubu believes in the freedom of expression, believes in the role that the media uh, has in ensuring that there is continuous and uninterrupted uh, uh, democracy in our land. So government is not desirous of doing anything that will harm that freedom of expression. But like we have said, where we feel that there is an infringement, where we feel that the media itself, or a section of it, in this particular case, the media trust has, uh, sorry, the Delhi trust has had, uh, government still believe that that news by the media trust is, is, is not correct. Nigerians have been misinformed, and in the process, a lot of damage has been done on the psyche of our people. People have interpreted, uh, sometimes without even reading the report itself, the wordings of daily trust and have taken to, uh, to preach or to, to make sermons on, on those. And therefore, uh, this further underscores the importance of media and what we say all the time. If we want to report, 
it is pertinent on all practitioners within this industry to ensure that you report what is correct and what is in the best interest of the nation. I think this is the message that uh, government has. And it is because of that that we have taken to the industry's own self-appointed ombudsman. The ombudsman is appointed by the industry itself to look at some of these excesses. And we have written to the ombudsman, made a complaint to the ombudsman to look at this report. And we have cited examples where we feel that Daily Trust has got it wrong. So that Daily Trust can come clean and also uh, mention, uh, mention or apologize uh, to the nation, to government and to the nation. There is no harm in saying we are wrong in this one. We apologize and then we get it right. But we don't expect that. We will just sit down and keep quiet when government feels that what a particular newspaper has written is not in the best interest of the country and it is not correct. It is misinformation and therefore action needs to be uh, to be taken. And the action that we have taken is that at, as, as we speak now, a formal complaint has already been lodged with the ombudsman. Law is dynamic and all over the world you have to amend your laws or practice it, interpret it, enforce it in a way to conform to modern realities. Some of the uh, areas that we are looking at is the timelines within which certain actions should be taken, certain considerations should be given, certain decisions should be reached. Because it's been discovered that one of the things that shoot up prices is uh, when um, uh, uh, considerations are not given to projects within time, especially from the angle of uh, the BPP or BP as the case may be, depending on the transaction. So these are some of the areas that we want to touch. Apart from that one, we want to ensure that whatever is coming to council aligns with the budgetary provision before it is approved. In fact, that was why the president approved in the interim that the projects brought or being sponsored or the memo brought by the Honorable Minister of Works should go to uh, the trio of the Honorable Minister for um, Budget, Honorable Minister of Finance, and the Honorable Minister of uh, Works to see is like a clearing house. Do we, can we undertake this project now? Do we have the capacity? What is the implication of doing it now or deferring it. But when the Procurement Act um, comes on, especially the amendment, all these aspects will be catered for, will be taken care of. So in respect of the livestock uh, um, development and whether, and in relation to the government policy of reducing governance, you know, to every general rule, there must be an exception. What would dictate the decision of government? What is guiding the decision of government or action or reaction of government is the overall interest of Nigerian uh, citizens. So in respect of this livestock, the president has taken very serious look at the uh, 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 contribution of a Greek. You know, we have a Greek div now divided into two. Having announced that there is going to be another ministry. It goes without saying that those implications will also uh, uh, go with it. I agree that that may cost money, but it will be done in a way that the benefits will by far outweigh the, uh, uh, the losses or the concern that you may express. I have talked about this live talk and I said one, apart from improving the protein uh, intake of our uh, um, uh, people, it also provides um, money for government because it's going to be on full or large scale that will ensure money or revenue for government. And there is also going to be increased employment opportunities for people. So these are some of the areas that I think I should uh, 
clear. Position of Council on Procurement Act is that it is long overdue for amendment. The last time it was um, touched was in 2007. Even a boy or a child born in 2007 by now should be getting prepared to enter the university. And because of the changing dynamics, it is important that we bring these uh, act, the content of the act, to be in tandem with the happenings in the society. So that was why the Mr. President directed that a good basis for performance, especially when it comes to infrastructural development, is to ensure that we have <coughs> a solid uh, procurement act in order to avoid corruption and also stem the tide of abandoned uh, projects. So very soon, we are going to have a new brand of procurement act which you know, speaks to the physical discipline of the programs of the present administration under the able leadership of President Bola Tinobu. The second aspect deals with what <coughs> the Honorable Minister of um, Information has just told you about the disturbing report by uh, um, um, Daily Trust. That is being handled because we are conscious of press freedom, and if you notice, the present administration has not and will not, you know, tamper with press freedom. And it will not generally, but particularly also because if you know the president, he has been an ardent supporter or believer in press freedom. In fact, that was what got him up to this um, point. So he's conscious of that, not only press freedom, generally uh, fundamental human rights as enshrined in the Constitution. So we just want to appeal. That is being taken up because we want to um, ensure that we give it all necessary uh, you know, friendly attention <coughs> before we take any further step if it fails. I hope it doesn't fail. Um, generally, government agencies, ministries, uh, inter-ministerial departments are available if there is any area that members of the press would like to clear. And the Freedom of Information Act is alive and is being rigorously, uh, you know, uh, honored and in operation. So I would um, advise that if there is any information that the members of the press require, should be channeled to the appropriate ministry, uh, department, or agency of government for clearance before you know, going to um, the press. This is um, the point I wish to highlight. But I don't know whether it is um, also appropriate, even though you have heard that, um, or might have heard that the president formally informed council that a ministry known as Ministry of uh, Livestock Development is being uh, established. And this is because he believes that the Ministry of Agriculture should be, you know, uh, broken into two. One concentrating on livestock development because of what we stand to achieve in terms of protein, in terms of uh, employment, in terms of, uh, uh, um, you know, earning to the government and how this one will rub off on the lives of an ordinary Nigerian citizen. So these are some of the issues that we discussed at the council, Federal Executive Council. Fiscal discipline, which is an important uh, thing for president and the cabinet. The delay in projects is as a result of many reasons. Sometimes the public procurement procedure itself actually contributes to a delay because it has timelines. And then just before Mr. President was sworn in, 
for the 2023 budget, the preceding government introduced what is known as the bottom-up cash plan, which is an accounting process where MDAs following the signature of a budget into law are uh, by the Public Procurement Act allowed to go on and do all the procurement processes, award the contract before beginning to request money from the Ministry of Finance. This procedure is new and it is part of what delayed the implementation of the 2023 budget itself and even the 2023 uh, supplementary budget. And even though speed is being gained, but it's also still affecting the 2024 budget implementation because it is only in the last one month that ministries have been uploading the, uh, their procurement plans which are now currently being funded. So as to budget performance, the budget performance on both the recurrent and, uh, federal and uh, recurrent including debt service, we have been up to date in our debt servicing. We have been up to date with personnel and recurrent cost. But the capital expenditure, we are not, uh, we are not yet pro rata because the bottom up cash plan is making it is making it uh, almost necessary for ministries to bunch procurement plans. And, but the good thing is yesterday the Accountant General of the Federation confirmed that she has no less than 200, 2 trillion in the Capital Development Fund. Thank President Asuaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu today, in line with the desire to enhance fiscal, more fiscal discipline and further demonstrate to Nigerians our commitment to serving them better, raised the issue of reconciliation between the Appropriation Act, the Public Act, Public Procurement Law, and the Fiscal Responsibility Act. The Federal Executive Council had set up a committee under the every chairmanship of the Attorney General and Honorable Minister of Justice to review the Public Procurement Act, and I think you'll be better placed to speak on that. However, the, after a robust discussion, Mr. President directed that all ministries, departments, and agencies should review <coughs> their intended procurement as provided for in the appropriation such that where there are gaps between appropriated sums and sums required to do the, uh, to execute the projects, that can be brought to the attention of both the Ministry of Budget and National Planning and Federal Ministry of Finance, such that the memo that sh the Cabinet Secretary will provide to uh, the Federal Executive Council will have recommendation, clear clarity of where funding is expected to come from and recommendation so as to guide effective Federal Executive Council decision. Uh, Mr. President directed that the report of the Public Procurement Committee be provided to him so that he can take